By now, you've heard uh, critics pounce on, on what President Trump said uh, or probably didn't say during the, the uh, press conference with Vladimir Putin. Uh, and, and, of course, uh, when the apology yesterday or, or the correction and clarification, a lot of folks say that didn't go far enough. But uh, there's a, a little coverage on, on what the meeting was actually about yesterday. We're talking about tax reform. 2.0. Ohio Republican Congressman Jim Renacci was in that room. He's running for Senate in Ohio. Uh, we've called his opponent just so that you know. And so, so far, we've yet to hear back from him. So, Congressman, let me start with you. First and foremost, I know President Trump doesn't like using the word reform, so I try not to use it. Tax cuts, uh, money making, whatever you call it. <laughs> What's it looking like? How do you think it's... What, uh, there's a lot of opinions. How's it coming in along so far? Well, look, the tax cuts and jobs bill is working. It's working in Ohio. As I travel the state, small businesses are now talking about increasing employment. They're talking about raising wages. They're doing it. They're giving out bonuses. They're also talking about reinvesting back into their companies. So we have over 600,000 more employees in the workforce because of all this growth across the country. Um, that's a labor statistic just came out. When you start to look at this, you know we're getting what we need. It's jobs and the economy. It's growing. But also, the stock market's growing. I heard you talking earlier. That, that helps the pensioners of, uh, you know, whether it's the police, the firefighters, all these pensions are growing at the same time, which gives people consumer confidence to spend more money, which is going to continue to grow the economy. So right now, we're talking about 2.0, making this permanent, so making let's, the individual. Let's go beyond the permanency of it, because uh, one of the issues that some have with this is that the first round, the first version of this uh, focused uh, overwhelmingly on corporate America. And of course, to your point, we see it already paying dividends. We see capital investments up. We see the stock market up. We see hiring up. But now the second round, you just mentioned small businesses. I, I, I'm hearing things like maybe favorable tax treatment for crowdfunding, uh, maybe ways of allowing small businesses to offer their versions of 401ks, those kind of things that can help small businesses lower better employees and also grow their business. Will that be a central focus as well? Well, absolutely. Two points of what you said. We got to make sure that the individual side is permanent, too. We got to make sure the tax cuts are permanent across the board. Corporate tax cuts are already permanent, but we got the other side uh, that we need to make sure permanency, including the individual side, including the S Corps and all of those. We got to make sure that everybody has certainty and predictability going forward. At the same time, though, we've got to make sure those individual tax cuts are, are solid and, and uh, guaranteed going forward so people can make decisions. We can't let the doubling of the standard deduction, for instance, get cut back in half in seven years. People need to know what their tax liabilities are going to be so even individuals can have that confidence and certainty to continue to spend money and keep the consumer confidence going. Congressman, another issue I know that's really deep uh, that you believe in a lot is this sort of notion of, of retraining our workers or training them properly for the current economic environment. We know that tomorrow there's going to be a big deal at the White House. Uh, the, the CEO of IBM calls them new collar jobs. So you need more than a high school diploma, but you don't need a college degree. In a state like Ohio, I think this is extraordinarily important. How do you see that coming along? Charles, I've been fighting for that for a couple of years now. We have left those individuals who don't want to go, go to college behind. We need to make sure we're changing our policies. I applaud Ivanka Trump and her rollout of the workforce development. That's what this is all about. It's about making sure that those that don't want to go to college, you could still make money. You could still live the American dream and not go to college. I say that all the time. I talk about plumbers and electricians who have lived the American dream, started their own business, never went to college. We need to make sure that we're bringing that Votech education and that training not only back into high school, but back into America and make sure those individuals know they can live the American dream without going to college. Of course, this is a tough one for conservatives uh, that have always said, hey, you know, the federal government should not be involved in education on a local level, but at least they can send a message. Uh, and, and, I, and, I, and I agree with you. It's just it's crazy that we have so many welding jobs that have gone on field, that we have so many jobs, good, great paying jobs that come with dignity and pride. But the question always gets down to who trains these folks and who pays for it. Well, too many of our policies are directing, too many of our federal policies today are directing a lot of individuals to college. We can use some of those dollars, whether it's Pell Grant funding or other funding, to make sure that individuals who don't want to get college have some funding. This is about growing the economy. Talk about debt, talk about deficits. If we can grow the economy, if we can get growth, sustained growth, over 4 or 5%, we can pay down our debt and have a much better future for our children and grandchildren. Congressman Renacci, it's always great talking to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Charles.